Hello everyone and welcome back to Shadow Archive. I'm Wilkie and I am here by myself to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. What happened, uh, well first of all, me and Zen did record the episodes for episodes 41 through 46. It was over an hour long, hour and 20 minutes of recording. And then today, I woke up and for some stupid reason, I looked and all the video files that I had said, these are a lot of video files I don't need, and I clicked to delete all, quickly realizing, oh, wait, I didn't actually edit the GX episode in time. So, it's gone. And I don't want to tell Zen to, if he has time. He's been very busy lately. We've been only been able to record on Friday. So, in order to keep up with our current schedule... Because we actually do have something planned. Um, as I say this, this is going to sound weird. But the season 1 finale for Yu-Gi-Oh! GX will be it for Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. And we will pause it and we will continue seasons 2 and 3 at a later date. Because we will be starting up a new series to go through it. And we will reveal that when the time comes. But we really wanted to do next week the complete final season finale of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX season 1. So in order to keep up track with that, I am going to be doing solo, going through all these episodes and explaining it like normal. Uh, I will give Zen's opinion when I get there because I remembered all of it. So let's get into it. Again, I'm really sorry about this one, but in order to keep it going, I have to. I made the dis- executive decision myself to do this. And I, really, I feel really bad. I'm going to start putting them in a safer folder to ensure that I don't do that again. I tried so hard to recover it. I downloaded so many different recovery things i entered the command prompt there was just no saving this file so sorry everyone but yeah th- this is shown in archive a series in which me and zenrod go through absolutely everything in shonen jump history as far as anime goes starting with kintama and going into Yu-Gi-Oh gx and then after season one of Yu-Gi-Oh gx going into another one at some point but anyway Let's start with what we have here, episode 41, A Reason to Win, which is the English name, or Dark Arena is Activated, Asuka vs. Titan. This is the Asuka vs. Titan duel. This starts with um, her brother, Fubuki, in Infirmary, and she he's basically kidnapped by Titan, who is the duelist, as you may remember, is the one that Kronos hired to take out, um, who was pretending to be a dark duelist and then ended up being taken away from Shadow Games. He's back and now he's a part of the Seven Assassins, not Seven, the Seven Star Assassins or the Seven, or Shadow Riders. I'm just going to call them Shadow Riders from here up on out because I constantly forget what the other name is. But anyway, uh, Titan kidnaps, uh, looks like he's kidnapped Fubuki. And he ends up kind of getting the drop on Asuka instead, and they have a duel, and they have a duel between each other. It's kind of shown throughout the duel that Asuka is dueling very differently from what she usually is. She is, I think, dueling a little bit more aggressive, and they feel like it might be some form of fear for the situations that she is currently in. Um... She is able to win the duel. Eventually, they have a back and forth, and she's able to win it after drawing Pot of Greed and using the effect of her cyber... uh, Cyber... What is the name of it? It is called the Cyber... um, Cyber... What the... uh, Cyber Blader, yeah. To have... It's like the Cyber Blader's weird three. If your opponent has three cards on the field, they get, like... All their spells and traps are negated, and he had set up... Uh, a, tra- a, a field spell that was very similar to the uh, Dark Duelist from Duelist Kingdom, the one that just made everything, the one from uh, the Castle of Dark Illusions where everything was dark. So she wins, and everyone's happy and yay, and then it turns out Fubiki does get his memories back, and he reveals that Professor Banner, aka Daikuchi or something like that, the I forget, his name is very hard to remember in the Japanese version, But he is the one that basically beckoned him to fall under the darkness. He basically, he is the one who kind of got him trapped in the place that he got him trapped. Is that he remembers that his voice was the one he heard before he was going there. I think that was the reason for it. So, uh, this episode is pretty nice because it's an Asuka duel and there's not a lot of, usually a lot, (laughs) this is the only one she's been allowed. I think this is the only Shadow Rider she's been allowed to fight, even though... 
uh, so many of them. The reason is is that so many of them either straight up say not interested or yeah, I think two out of uh, two out of uh, two out of the six of them, uh, two out of the seven of them just straight up said no, thank you, and said we were not interested in dueling women. So she wasn't even allowed to participate in those. So she actually finally gets to have her uh, her fight, and this is actually a kind of a nice one because it's a fight against Titan, which is basically a rematch. Um, not a rematch, but she gets a little bit of revenge for being kidnapped there, and she overcomes whatever fear she might have had. Um, uh, it ends up being very nice. I like this duel. I, it was nice to see Asuka actually get a win, because we have been 41 episodes in, and not really much has been done with her besides her showing up at the lighthouse, which we get here, which was one of my favorite moments, was when uh, Kaiser showed up and said the reason that he knew that she was in trouble is that she didn't show up at the lighthouse, because <laughs> that's the place that they love to go to. But other than that, we get some nice backstory on Asuka herself. Like, when she was a kid, she used to run nothing but basically a beatdown deck. She had, like, Fairy Meteor Crush. She had Enraged Battle Logs. Which is really funny to think of that she... Before she went on to the Cyber Belator ladies, that she ran, like, pure <laughs> gorilla beatdown as a kid. Uh, which is funny because we see a little bit of it a little bit later on to kind of, like, drive home the point of, like, Oh, yeah, when she was a kid, all she did was just run big beaters. Um, there's also a very nice shot of, like, a very effeminate man hug between Kaiser and Fubuki, which I said launched probably the shipping of them, and then Zen confirmed it to me by saying, oh my god, there's so much you would not believe. But yeah, I thought it was a very, like, nice duel. It was a good episode. Probably not one of the strongest, but it is kind of nice to see uh, side characters get to duel and actually win because for the most part they don't get to do either because Judai is the main character and he just kind of takes center stage so um, so often <laughs> so good episode I'd say next episode which was uh, our favorite episode of this batch episode 42 Duel Monster Spirit Day, also known as the School Festival Duel. <laughs> the Black Magician Girl barges in. But on the Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, wiki for this episode, it, they call it the Blah Magurga Girl barges in, <laughs> which is uh, very funny. Basically, there is a festival going on at the Spirit Day. Everyone does something different, and in the... Um, raw, I don't know why I call them raw yellow... Slifer Red, for their side specifically, they have to do a cosplay duel, and every year no one shows up to it. And Sho realizes it's because Slifer Red has no women, so he begs Asuka to go in cosplay in order to get maximum profit out of... <laughs> so finally something, it's basically to save Slifer Red, but he also has another ulterior motive for this, which is not just seeing her cosplay. But it's actually because he's noticed that all of the main dudes have been very bummed out. So he figures, why not give them a happy-go-lucky day? And maybe take their mind off of things a little bit to actually get to just be kids for a day and stuff like that. So, uh, she agrees to cosplay because her brother's like, oh yeah, I would love to see you in something like that. So there we go. Um, originally they said, I think they really wanted a Dark Magician Girl, but it turns out Miss Dorothy was their Dark Magician Girl, and that's the actual real reason why no one ever goes to Slifer Red Cosplay Duel. And she ends up breaking her costume so she doesn't even go. Um, Alexis dresses up as the harp, uh, the main harpy lady sister, full on with the giant Japanese, uh, nipple guard that the harpy ladies have. If you've never seen the original harpy ladies armor art, it's something to behold for sure. Judai dresses up as a weird, like, mishmash of various things. He has, like, the hat of Soggy the Dark Clown. He has the bodysuit of Breaker the Magical Warrior. He has the boots of Mercuria the Destroyer, the shoulder pads as the Celtic Guardian, and the shield of Gearfried. And he ends up taking it off right before he ends up dueling the Dark Magician Girl because he can't actually function in it. Chat, uh, Manjome, in my favorite bit, shows up as the XYZ Dragon Cannon, which really reminds me of the one episode of, um, South Park where Kenny shows up as the Ed 209, which is really funny. And he also, at one point when they're looking for people to duel, he says, I can't actually duel in this. Are you crazy? It's a fantastic costume. Uh, so yeah, they, they say, all right, let's have a cosplay duel. Judai is basically the only one that can do it. Everyone else is like, A, I can't do it. 
Uh, Monjobi can't do it because he can't go in there. Sho can't do it because he's the MC. Asuka can't do it because her brother takes a picture of her in the cosplay and she chases away trying to get back the picture, which he says is for the fan club, which Monjomi says, thank you very much. I will look at that later. Thank you. Um, but it's okay because the Dark Magician Girl shows up and everyone goes absolutely fucking nuts wild for it and is every, everyone cheers for her as they duel. This is a good bit here. Masawa shows up in the Amazonist tiger, dressed up as the Amazonist tiger, showing that he is still not over the breakup with the woman that was his love, which is now a tiger who was always a tiger. <sighs> but yeah, the duel goes on. A lot of people are just cheering for the Dark Magician Girl no matter what she does. Her first move is to literally set one face down and end her turn, and everyone cheers for her. <laughs> it is the greatest moment anyone has ever had for this specific moment. Um, everyone absolutely loves the Dark Magician Girl, and they're all saddened when Judai eventually beats her, and he beats her in a very interesting way. Because he basically uses a way, um, she was able to summon two magicians, Valkyries, and doing that, um, made it so he couldn't attack her, but then it's okay because he activated a tr two trap cards, one to stop the Dark Magician Girls from, uh, attacking him, and then another trap card that made both Valkyries attack into Flame Wingman and making him win, so... Everyone's happy. Uh, Sho realizes that was the real Dark Magician girl, and she gives him a little uh, kiss on the cheek to say, hey, good job. You were really going out for everyone to make it fun. And it's a happy-go-lucky ending. And that was episode 42. Um, for me, this was definitely both me and Zen's favorite episode of this specific batch. The reason is, is that not only because it had Dark Magician Girl, but it was also a very, like, slice-of-life heavy um, episode featuring a lot of cool moments. I think GX is at its peak, probably, when it's about, like, an actual slice of life and you're just seeing people hang out and having fun in a very silly setting, which is a dual school <laughs> and... Unfortunately, for the most part, a lot of the episodes I actually kind of focus on that have been one of the ones that have been a little bit bad, but it's okay. This one was absolutely fantastic with the school festival. Um, oh, and then eventually Alexis, uh, Asuka does show up with her friends to fi finish out the Harpy Lady Sisters. Uh, she was originally going to ask them, but then they ran away from her before she could ask because they knew what they were going to ask. But by the end, she seems to be able to convince them. But yeah, this was a lot of fun. Uh, Dark Magician Girl cheats during her duel and doesn't... The duel only lasts, I think, four turns. It's not much. But it's perfectly fine for what it is. Seeing everyone dressed up, especially, uh, was fantastic. This is also show's best, um, showing. And the reason is, is that we realize this, is that show when he's trying to be a duelist, is absolutely terrible. But when he's, like, some kind of horny imp man is when he's actually at peak power and at peak enjoyability. Because his character trait of, I just really love women, is great. I don't know why it's so great, but whenever it shows up, it's always fantastic. And in this episode, it's actually, it's absolutely great. He also has some good moments where he's on the XYZ uh, Dragon Cannon. And he refers to Monjome as XYZ Dragon Cannon for his commentary. Um, the commentary between them is all great. It's just a great episode overall. Favorite of the batch so far. And yeah, absolutely worth taking a watch. Who knew that the episode with the Dark Magician Girl would end up being so good. But it would be. And now... Let's move on to something completely different, because this was uh, one of the, the worst episodes of The Batch, and arguably is one of the worst episodes of GX that we've had so far, which is saying something, because there's a lot of bad GX episodes. Next episode is episode 43, Hearts Are Wild, also known as Second Chance of Love for Asuka, and it goes like this. Basically, there's a gambler, he hears about the sacred cards... The Phantom Beast, he goes to the Dual Island. He says, hey, give me them, I'll keep them in... <laughs> I'll keep them in good position or something. He starts arguing with the Chancellor about it. Um, and then um, Asuka shows up and says, he's not worthy, I'll duel him. If he beats me, then he can have it. But if I win, I get his best possession. They duel. The duel is 100% focused on luck. Because the gambler just uses uh, a luck-based deck, and 
Oscar wins after she destroys his um, second coin toss because she realizes he actually loses every single coin toss that he does first. It's the second one that he actually gets. He has absolutely no skill in gambling, which you can't really have, I guess, unless you're, I guess, a poker guy, which is a different thing. She beats him, and it's also revealed during the duel that they were they knew each other in the past, and... Yeah, the the gambler boy was a really fucking big weirdo. He took her her scarf from her dying mom, the one she made, (laughs) and he ran off with it, and she was finally able to get it back here. And the episode ends with them going like, oh, man, he really did love her, and man, this episode sucked so bad. Unbelievable. It's unfortunate because it seems like... (laughs) Asuka has the unfortunate thing of a lot of the duels right based around her are around dudes who really like her, which is, I want to say, the same thing that happened to Mai, is that Mai only got a win when it was related to a man who wanted to marry her, and Asuka basically has that times three in this season, because the next one features Monchome, so there's going to be another one. It's kind of crazy, but yeah, this this gambler guy is a creep i don't like him i don't like the way he was acting the fact the way that he was just some rich asshole that took her red scarf and then everyone's like oh he actually loved her no this sucks so bad (laughs) i don't think you understand how just absolutely shit this character is and it feels like the only reason he was able to get away with anything that he does is that he's rich so no one actually cares about what he does some actually positive things in here though uh, there's a point here where uh, Judai is looking out to the sea, and Asuka says that you shouldn't be gazing from here, and I'd like to think it's because he wasn't doing it by the lighthouse, which is the proper way to look out to the sea. The gambler wants everyone to call him the boy, and Asuka just straight up refuses to call him the boy. Um, again, she talks shit saying you have no skill at gambling, <laughs> which is just a funny statement in general. Uh, and when we see Kid Asuka and her deck... Um, it's the most weirdest deck in the way. It has like Armored Lizard and Gokibora. And then she wins by summoning Gemini Elf in attack mode to take out Snake Woman. It's the weirdest beatdown deck I've ever seen. I don't know how the board state got into such a manner, but I guess it did somehow. And yeah, that's this episode. It was really bad. It's one of the bad ones for sure. And the less said about it, the better. So we will move on to the next episode. Which is episode 44, The Seventh Rider. The the Seventh Shadow Rider, or The Shadow of the Seventh, if it's on the Japanese version of it. This one's pretty simple. Basically, the teacher, Daikuchi, is still missing. Professor Banner, which I should just call him because it's an easier name to say. It reminds me of Bruce Banner. Basically, he's still missing, so um, Manjome, Judai, and... Mm, I think it's Sho. I can't remember if... Uh, I don't know why I keep wanting to call him Hisagawa. His name is not Hisagawa. That is from Gintama. <laughs> the show would be much better if Hisagawa was in it. Um, Hayato. I don't remember if Hayato was there. But either... No, he probably... Yes, he was. He had to be there. Hayato was there. They decide to go off and look for him. So we get a little bit of Detective Manjome Thunder as he tries very badly to figure out what's going on. Then we have a beep, uh, kind of like a B plot where once again Fubuki is attacked at the night by a, by the last Shadow Rider and he's taken away. Asuka kind of follows through with him and has a duel with him, but it's a duel in which we don't see any of his cards. It's kind of like framed kind of like a horror movie. Where they're just kind of silently dueling. You don't see the attack value. You just kind of see shadows of it. And he's able to take out Asuka. And eventually he also tracks down Manjome. And they have a duel. You don't see the effects of the, You only see the ends of it. Which is uh, him losing. And when he loses. Um, his It's kind of treated like he died. With his cards like face down in the water. Because they were dueling by the water. Um... They also were. They also had their big dudes out, so just nothing could happen at, at all. So, um, with them out, it finally six of the seven keys have been activated. So gi- giant pillars of rainbow start bursting out from the waters of Duel Academy, which is to symbolize to Judai that he is the last one, and the final Shadow Rider is coming for him. And yeah, that's this episode. There's really not many duels. It's a lot of like 
searching around and kind of doing some detective stuff and building it. There's some really funny moments where they're remembering the good times they had with their teacher and it's nothing but terrible worst times. <laughs> he seems like the one of the worst people they've ever met, but it's kind of like he's our worst person and we'll be damned if anyone else is going to take him from us. Um, this is also the first episode, I think, where Manjome has fully just embraced that his name is Manjome Thunder. He no longer corrects people that it's Sir. He just goes, I am Thunder. Thank you very much. But yeah, um, Zen really liked this episode because he said it kind of rem- it's kind of filmed like a horror movie. And I would agree with him. It's a very interesting thing to kind of just set up for this final match. Uh, they did have to take out Manjome and Asuka because they just... They just had to. I don't understand why they couldn't. Actually, I do understand. They wanted to keep what he was running specifically a secret so that when um, he was shown, you would see why they had such trouble with him and stuff like that. At least that's what I think it is like that. Um, but yeah, I thought it was a good episode overall. Very enjoyable. A nice kind of way to set up, and it's also very different from what you would expect. So, Seventh Shadow Rider. Now we will move on episode 45 which is Omnel's Endgame Part 1 or versus Omnel the absolute seal of the elemental hero okay so this is with the start of the duel between Judai and Omnel before then they kind of go looking for Omnel they're kind of following his mark in the previous episode they established the mark when Kronos uh, showed up to try and teach um uh, the alchemy class, but he failed. All he could really give out was this specific mark, so this mark has been everywhere. And the mark kind of points them to the abandoned dorm, and inside the abandoned dorm underneath, they find their teacher. Professor, they find Banner, and he's been basically mummified. Um, he, he's been turned into a mummy. Omnel shows up, and he says, okay, duel me. And so they duel, and he summons his alchemy beast. We're just a five hundred, a bunch of five hundred attack dudes that can <laughs> attack directly. So not very good, but in the context of only having four thousand life points, that's actually pretty good. He starts to talk about Judai, saying that um, Judai has to be like he has to figure out what's going on himself. He's like kind of like being very mysterious about everything that he's doing. But he basically reveals to him that he has his friends trapped inside the book. They're sealed. He has Manjomi, he has Asuka, and he has Fubuki sealed inside his book. And if he wants to get them back, he basically has to duel them. He asks them what's up with Banner, and he says, You have to. What lies at the bottom is like what lies at the, uh, at the top of it. Um, and then he says that what lies at the top is like what lies at the bottom. So we're just being cryptic and stuff like that. They duel. He's able to... He's Basically, his entire strategy is based around him using this card called Chaos is Still, where he gets to remove an element of a card, and basically it stops that card from attacking. So he does that to all his elemental heroes. He doesn't really fusion summon in this duel. He gets stopped at every kind of, like, juncture. He uses a lot of their, like, equip spells, like summoning Bubble Man, giving him Bubble Shot... In my favorite moment from this, he can, he summons uh, Elemental Hero Clayman and he gives him the Mud Max, which is this bitchin' ass vehicle. Where I saw someone say after I posted about it, they said uh, after I put down picks that go hard, uh, Carlos said Solrock said Clayman drift, and then Dom said I wish Clayman was my dad. So that made me laugh a whole bunch looking back at that. Uh, through the duel, he eventually is able to crack the mask of the guy after he uh yeah so he basically summons every single one of the elemental heroes and then he finally uses burst return to return them to his hand but then he uses burst impact which is a much better version that destroys all monsters on the field except for certain tricks and inflicts 500 300 points of damage so they're able to destroy all his monsters and inflict 2800 damage to him the cracks reveal that he is basically Banner and that reveals his true face. Pharaoh also kind of meows and gets pet picked up by him and is able to be pet, which confirms who he is. He says that... Um, uh, I can't remember if it's in this episode or it's the next one. 
But basically, it ends with the reveal, like, oh my god, it's... Oh no, he says he's able to be brought back from the world of the dead for the power of the alchemy. So that mummy is also him. Uh, so that's just his old body in a mummified state, and that's how the duel ends for this now. Uh, and yeah, this one, this is this was this episode. This episode was pretty good because it's like a different way of using the elemental heroes to kind of figure out and solve a problem. I really like the kind of setup they have here of the idea of alchemy and how much Ju Judai is kind of like an alchemist. He just doesn't realize it. I think they bring it up more in the next episode about how he's kind of like an alchemist, but basically he is someone who is um, basically taking the elements that he has and actually using them in a way that is similar to alchemy. So he's using like fire, water, wind, earth, all these different elements, and he's able to fuse them together with polymerization or other stuff to get a new result, which is basically what alchemy seeks to do. So I thought it was kind of cool. I was like, yeah, he does have a very good point. His deck is kind of set up a lot like that. So it was nice. This is a good part one of the duel. And now we will go on to the next part, which is Omnail's Endgame Part 2. Episode 46. After Omnail reveals that the, he's the final Shadow Rider and that he was Banner all along. Uh, he talks about he's been looking for the Philosopher's Stone so that he could live forever. Which is what all alchemists kind of go for. Um... Everyone basically goes looking for it, and in his search for looking for it, that's how he found the Sacred Beast around the same time that, like, Pegasus was able to find uh, the original dual monster stuff. But this entire thing, like, during this entire trip, his body has been exhausted, which is why he built a homunculus, which is an artificial life form to kind of keep him alive. But it's obviously not lasting very long because he's very close to death because his entire body is cracking down, is breaking down. <sighs> and so he believes that he's able to get the Sacred Beast and he'll be fine. And I believe, or he will be able to create the Philosopher's Stone and that will be in itself fine. At this point, Pharaoh kind of gets away from him and they have their final exam, which he says is to beat him. Um... They duel with each other. Eventually, it activates. It gets to the point where um, Banner activates Macrocosmos, which takes him into space, and he has to fight like a bunch of head, uh, son for the head women. And this is also where you can see Manjome, Asuka, and Fubuki, who have been up in space this entire time, I guess, in little spherical balls. Um. Eventually, he it gets to the point where it's like it's clear he's gonna lose. He's exhausted basically every single one of his elemental heroes. He's used multiple fusions; none of it is working. His all his elemental heroes, except for like Wild Edge and Sparkman, are in the graveyard. So there's not a lot of things he can just draw to win. Um, and he feels like it is point. It is um, there's no way he can win. And that's when Banner kind of gives him this speech about how. Um, if you truly believe, he basically gives him a speech. I forget how the specific setup is, but but the ba basic idea is that Judai says something to the effect of like, um, he's no different from when he started, and he's like, is that true from a year ago from today? And he realizes, no, that's not true. Basically, I've made a lot of friends going through here. I'm a better person than I am now, and I think I can do that. Uh, I should also say he did actually take down Sparkman. He didn't have any of the cards. He did take down Sparkman. I just completely forgot. Um, we didn't have Wing Karibo. He was using <laughs> Wing Karibo. But yeah, his hand is at zero. He has no materials left to create anything. Um, he asked him exactly the same he was a year ago, but that's when he met Wing Karibo, and he was able to meet all his friends. Um, he's able to make like new friends, and that kind of puts something in his head, and he's able to believe in himself once again. So then he draws his next card, which ends up being Miracle Fusion, which I think the reason Miracle Fusion is named Miracle Fusion is because in this exact scenario where he had literally nothing else, it was the perfect card that he needed for a miracle. So I think that's kind of cool. Um, I never realized that's probably why they named it that way, but he fuses away Clayman, Avion, Berserchix, and Mobile Man to make Electrum. Where an Electrum wins the game by uh, stopping the combo that he was under, which was an infinite banish kind of dealio by 
uh, making the monster that he had on the field, zero attack, and Electrum kind of finishes him off from there. Omnil, aka Banner, dies, and he dies kind of going off as like a good man, saying like, I think you're going to be strong enough, it's not over, so watch out, but I think you've been trained well enough now that I think you might have the power, because you have a lot of power inside you, um, but you're also not fully tapping into it and stuff like that, but I think you'll be good. And so he crumbles away, and he has, like, a little spirit, and Pharaoh eats the spirit from behind everyone's back. <laughs> so, meaning probably Banner is still going to be around. But everyone kind of treats it as, all right, I guess we're done, even though um, he's, they treat it as, I think, the other two, uh, which is um, Sho and Hayato, are like, oh, yeah, peace returns. But Judai is like, no there might be someone and there still might be a greater disaster to come and if that happens then i'll stop it and that kind of is where the episode ends and yeah this is this episode was also good i think we talked a little bit about it where i feel like the specific reveal of omnel banner could have been handled better because you just really don't end up liking banner he ends up being kind of a dick which to be fair they do bring up that he's kind of a dick He's not very effective for anything, so I kind of is, it kind of feels like, well, you can see it of one of two ways. He was being helpful, but then he wasn't also helpful. I do remember also being kind of angry because Sho knew from the start that he was, oh, something was up with him, and he never brings it up after the one time that he sees it, which is just weird and bizarre. It feels like kind of like a dumb thing and makes Sho look seem way worse and than anything for not remembering or not bringing it up constantly but maybe he was just being too trusting but yeah that specific reveal i wish could have been better um but i think the duel that itself was handled extremely well his kind of final moments were nice as he kind of fades away and the setup for what is going to be the ending here because obviously you don't set up the sacred beast without having a duel in which someone uses all three sacred beasts so we will wait and see how that plays out in the next upcoming episodes but this episode was also good i thought this one was good of the batches we've seen i would say only one really big stinker and the rest were good and obviously the best episode was the one with the dark magician girl because it was just so much fun um yeah good stuff Good stuff overall. One bad clunker one, but at least it was fun to make fun of it with Zen, which unfortunately has been lost to time. <laughs> You're not going to be able to hear any of that. So sad about it. Again, very sorry, but I will do better with that in the future. So what's coming up next for Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, like I said, is the end of Season 1. We will be covering the final episodes of Season 1, which are Episode 47, Episode 48, Episode 49, Episode 50, episode 51 and episode 52 so that will encompass um another oscar duel with a man that is deeply in love with her the leaving of hayato the um the duel with the sacred beast and the graduation duel between judai and kaiser which is zen's one of zen's favorite um duels in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! So, one, and also one that I have never, ever actually seen, so I'm kind of interested to see how that goes as well. But yeah, that's it for Shonen Archive, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, this is a shorter one, specific. It still ended up being 33 minutes, goddamn. But imagine an hour more with me and Zen kind of screwing around. Me and Zen really love talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! So it's been a hell of a time talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to do everything in my damn power to make sure that we will be able to talk fully about Yu-Gi-Oh! GX next week and that you will be able to hear it because um, it is the finale of it. And in terms of what is going to be coming up, we will have a short little teaser video to say what is next. Um, so don't worry about that. When the time comes, you'll know. But that's going to be basically in two weeks. But it is something that we've been looking forward to doing. And yeah. Yeah, as always, you can always check out Zen on his channel, where you can see Shonen and Show, where he he does with the Ocean Man, where he covers up the current events of Shonen Jump stuff that he specifically reads. He's not, he's not a true Shonen Jumper because he doesn't read One Piece. If you want the true One Piece experience, come to me because I'm a big. I read the One Piece manga. Today it's actually coming out on Monday, which is kind of annoying to me because it's today's Sunday. 
and I would like I was I woke up expecting One Piece, but there was no One Piece. It made me a little sad. Uh, you can follow my channel where I do a bunch of other stuff by following the channel down below. And yeah, that's it, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Have a good day. And I'll let the outro play. Yes. Goodbye.